Chapter Two of Persuasion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Persuasion, by Jane Austen. Chapter Two. Mister Shepherd, a civil, cautious lawyer, who, whatever might be his hold or his views on Sir Walter. Would rather have the disagreeable prompted by anybody else. Excused himself from offering the slightest hint, and only begged leave to recommend an implicit reference to the excellent judgment of Lady Russell, from whose known good sense he fully expected to have just such resolute measures advised as he meant to see finally adopted. Lady Russell was most anxiously zealous on the subject, and gave it much serious consideration. She was a woman rather of sound than of quick abilities. Whose difficulties in coming to any decision in this instance were great, from the opposition of two leading principles. She was of strict integrity herself, with a delicate sense of honour, but she was as desirous of saving Sir Walter's feelings as solicitous for the credit of the family, as aristocratic in her ideas of what was due them as anybody of sense and honesty could well be. She was a benevolent, charitable, good woman, and capable of strong attachments. Most correct in her conduct, strict in her notions of decorum, and with manners that were held a standard of good breeding, she had a cultivated mind and was, generally speaking, rational and consistent. But she had prejudices on the side of ancestry. She had a value for rank and consequence, which blinded her a little to the faults of those who possessed them. Herself, the widow of only a knight, she gave the dignity of a baronet all its due, and Sir Walter. Independent of his claims as an old acquaintance, an attentive neighbour, an obliging landlord, the husband of her very dear friend, the father of Anne and her sisters, was, as being Sir Walter, in her apprehension, entitled to a great deal of compassion and consideration under his present difficulties. They must retrench. That did not admit of a doubt. But she was very anxious to have it done with the least possible pain to him and Elizabeth. She drew up plans of economy. She made exact calculations, and she did what nobody else thought of doing. She consulted Anne, who never seemed considered by the others as having any interest in the question. She consulted, and in a degree was influenced by her in marking out the scheme of retrenchment which was at last submitted to Sir Walter. Every emendation of Anne's had been on the side of honesty against importance. She wanted more vigorous measures, a more complete reformation, a quicker release from debt. A much higher tone of indifference for everything but justice and equity. If we can persuade your father to all this," said Lady Russell, looking over her paper, "much may be done. If he will adopt these regulations, in seven years he will be clear. And I hope we may be able to convince him and Elizabeth that Kellynch Hall has a respectability in itself which cannot be affected by these reductions. And that the true dignity of Sir Walter Elliot will be very far from lessened in the eyes of sensible people by acting like a man of principle. What will he be doing, in fact? But what very many of our first families have done or ought to do? There will be nothing singular in his case, and it is singularity which often makes the worst part of our suffering, as it always does of our conduct. I have great hope of prevailing. We must be serious and decided. For after all, the person who has contracted debts must pay them, and though a great deal is due to the feelings of the gentleman and the head of a house like your father, there is still more due to the character of an honest man. This was the principle on which Anne wanted her father to be proceeding, his friends to be urging him. She considered it as an act of indispensable duty to clear away the claims of creditors with all the expedition which the most comprehensive retrenchments could secure, and saw no dignity in anything short of it. She wanted it to be prescribed and felt as a duty. She rated Lady Russell's influence highly, and as to the severe degree of self-denial which her own conscience prompted, she believed there might be little more difficulty in persuading them to a complete than to half a reformation. Her knowledge of her father and Elizabeth inclined her to think that the sacrifice of one pair of horses would be hardly less painful than of both, and so on through the whole list of Lady Russell's too gentle reductions. How Anne's more rigid requisitions might have been taken is of little consequence. 
Lady Russell's had no success at all. Could not be put up with, were not to be borne. What? Every comfort of life knocked off. Journeys, London, servants, horses, table, contractions and restrictions everywhere. To live no longer with the decencies even of a private gentleman. No, he would sooner quit Kellynch Hall at once than remain in it on such disgraceful terms. Quit Kellynch Hall. The hint was immediately taken up by Mr. Shepherd whose interest was involved in the reality of Sir Walter's retrenching, and who was perfectly persuaded that nothing would be done without a change of abode. "'Since the idea had been started in the very quarter which ought to dictate, he had no scruple,' he said, in confessing his judgment to be entirely on that side. It did not appear to him that Sir Walter could materially alter his style of living in a house which had such a character of hospitality and ancient dignity to support. In any other place, Sir Walter might judge for himself, and would be looked up to, as regulating the modes of life in whatever way he might choose to model his household. Sir Walter would quit Kellynch Hall, and after very few days more of doubt and indecision, the great question of whither he should go was settled, and the first outline of this important change made out. There had been three alternatives, London, Bath, or another house in the country. All Anne's wishes had been for the latter. A small house in their own neighbourhood, where they might still have Lady Russell's society, still be near Mary, and still have the pleasure of sometimes seeing the lawns and groves of Kellynch, was the object of her ambition. But the usual fate of Anne attended her, in having something very opposite from her inclination fixed on. She disliked Bath, and did not think it agreed with her. And Bath was to be her home. Sir Walter had at first thought more of London— 